Hello, hello. All right, just give me a sec. I wanna make sure that my sound is working well. All right. I have such sensitive skin. You can see where I was pushing back my hair. The fun part of being super sensitive psychically and energetically is it transcends to physically. My skin is super sensitive. I'm super sensitive to certain foods, products. I have to be really picky because being sensitive spiritually means pretty much being sensitive physically. It's not like I can be super sen super unsensitive physically, but super sensitive spiritually. It kind of transcends. So just ignore these little red markings and they will go away in a few minutes. All right, there I am. Let's check my sound is working. Boom. Ah, yes, there I am. All right, perfect. So hello everyone. How's everyone going? I'm just gonna have some water. Hello, hello. Hey Sophie, hey Brittany. God, these red marks are getting brighter. <laughs> I was just talking about how being um, psychically sensitive makes you sensitive physically as well, like sensitive to certain foods and touch. This was literally me from like pushing my hair back and now I've got like these red little spots. So if you're wondering what that is, they're gonna fade in a couple of minutes and we're just gonna ignore that for now. Um, hey Gabby, welcome everyone. I'm hopping in to do a live to talk about manifestation. Now, my spiritual team has been like, pushing me on manifestation work for a while now. And it's not really something I consciously sought out. I wasn't like, hey, spirit, teach me how to manifest and show me. But it's like over and over again, spirit is just um, sharing with me, bombarding me with channelings, like teachings on manifestation, like the big Syrian um, collective that we, I have one of the episodes of that on my podcast, but we channeled them last year into this year. And the whole like subject of their channelings was co-creating and how to co-create using our Merkaba and manifesting the way that humans are doing it now is outdated and there are more ways to do it. And so Spirit has just been bombarding me with manifestation techniques that they want me to be using. And even last week I did a, this amazing channeling with Melchior who just shared with me the 12 um, universal laws for manifesting. And most of them, like, well, probably about half of them seem pretty obvious. It was like, you know, um, the amount of energy that we're channeling in is um, shifts the work we do. Um, working with our guides and our spiritual team makes it a lot easier. But there were some that he spoke about that I was like, oh, that's really interesting. I didn't think of that. And I'm going to sum it all up and share it in one of the podcast episodes. So you want to make sure that you do listen to that to get to ensure that basically you're manifesting the right way in accordance with the universal laws. So Spirit's just been sharing so much manifesting stuff with me, right? And it's I haven't been asking for it, but it's just been showing up. Even last night I was having um, dreams about the redback spider who I just posted this in my Instagram stories, which if you're not following me on Instagram, it's starseed underscore awakening. Um, but basically the redback spider represents femininity receiving through manifestation work she's a creatrix weaving her web in receiving because they're they're indigenous to where i live and i get a lot of them i'm in bondi in sydney australia and i get a lot of them here like all over my window um especially when it gets warm we get so many of them and they are very venomous they do kill people but no one's died from them because of the anti-venom stuff we have for years and they're pretty peaceful but I actually do get them here a lot and they, the male after procreating shows them their abdomen and says, you know, eat me to receive sus substance. And most of the time the woman does eat it. So she's really representative of the receiving, the creation and weaving the web. So it's just like spirit's been one thing after another with manifestation. And so today when I was like, all right, what am I going to do my live stream about? They said manifesting talk about why it's not working for them why they're struggling with it so i'm going to talk about probably the three main reasons why your manifestations aren't showing up you know um i talk about how i manifest on one of my podcast episodes and i give you exactly the process for how i actually do it so that's light leaders podcast uh, and i share with you how i do it but if you're doing that 
you're kind of doing the whole align, um, tune into it, feel into it, and it's still not showing up, we're gonna kind of troubleshoot today and go through some stuff of maybe what's going on, what's happening. And you can ask any questions that you have about manifesting in the comments below and I'll answer it. I'll bring it up now so I can see if you have any questions. Um, so yes, essentially with manifesting, it's ask, like set the intention and align with it. People have the hard time with the aligning because asking for it, that's, you know, as long as we own our desires, they're in alignment with our highest good, which most of the time they are. It's the aligning with it that people have a hard time. That's the feeling into it, deciding, committing to it, taking the aligned action to support it as well. That's where people have a really hard time. But if you are doing that, you know, I recommend doing that through um, a meditation process. That's probably the easiest way to do that, to actually um, visualize yourself in that situation, feel into it, connect into it, because you want to feel as if. That's how we work with the law of attraction. We magnetize it to us. So you want to really feel into it as if it, as if it is yours already. But if you're doing that, you're doing that every day. You keep asking, you say, this is what I want, spirit. This is what I want. And you've been at it for weeks. Nothing's shifted. Nothing's shown up. Because it can show up very, very quickly. But if it's just not, and you've been at it for a long time, it's time to look into why is it not working now the first time that I the first thing that I want to just kind of get off the get out of the way to make sure that you're not kind of this isn't a block for you or an issue for you is divine timing divine timing is really hard because we might be asking something to show up in our lives and it may not be ready it may not be for our highest good we may not be ready to receive it and spirit is going not yet just not yet not yet now if this is the case you're going to feel it intuitively and in those situations where i've been in there i felt it intuitively i've really kind of kept going like I can feel I'm not supposed to have this yet. I can feel I'm not supposed to have this yet. And I want to give an example, you know, a real world example of something that happened to my boyfriend where um, he's, so he's 21 years older than me, right? Yeah, we have a big age gap. Um, and he came to one of my courses and that's how we met. But he had told me that he had been trying to manifest someone like me where we could be doing this soul work um, together with the soulmate connection for years. But the problem is I was too young. We only met when I was like 23, right? And I already was like, whoa, that's a big age gap. I'm not ready to move into that. Um, and he had been asking for like five years for someone to show up, but spirit wasn't going to like hand me over at 19. I wasn't ready. I was like, no way. Like I had a hard enough time dealing. Like I was like, okay, I know age is this number and I'm old enough. Like I'm not a young girl. Um, you know, and so kind of wrapping my head around it, but I just was not ready. And I, this is something that I see a lot with soulmate manifestations. You might be ready, but your other half isn't. And that's really hard to comprehend for a lot of people. They're like, I'm ready. I'm doing all the work. You know, I'm showing up. I'm so ready to have this um, soulmate come into my life that I'm ready to receive. But they're actually not. Your other half isn't ready to show up for you. And that's really, really hard to accept. If you're in that situation where you just keep feeling that, like your other half isn't actually ready to show up, um, you need to talk to their higher self, right? So connect to the soulmate that you're feeling, that you're calling in, connect to their higher self and just have a chat. Say, I'm ready for you, like, you know, please do more work so you can show up in my life because I'm ready to receive you. Because chances are they still might be stuck in an old relationship where they're learning lessons that they need to before they enter their soulmate relationship with you. Because we have karmic relationships first to learn our lessons, get what we need to before we enter a soulmate relationship. A soulmate relationship is marked by you do your soul work together, right? So a karmic relationship, they might be teaching you lessons that support your work and support you stepping into it but a soulmate relationship will directly support it right so for example my boyfriend he's always more excited for me to channel since i started dating him like i channel about a hundred times as much as i did before and he always records and writes them out like he's so passionate about them and he's like share them and he's like we have to meditate together and he actually has supported me and my work so much and amplified it and that's what a soulmate connection does it amplifies your soul work directly and 
grows your spiritual evolution and you're both kind of growing into it together you help each other grow into your soul work and your soul mission and that's the mark of a soulmate relationship usually before it we got to go through a karmic one and if your soulmate hasn't shown up it's probably because they're still in the karmic relationship learning the lessons um so in those situations it is divine timing and you kind of just got to go okay like <laughs> i understand they're not ready yet and so I've just got to talk to their higher self and keep kind of praying for their spiritual growth that they're going to get it and show up. It, this kind of divine timing is a lot rarer in things like your business because it's more reliant on you. You're not kind of waiting on someone else. You're not the other half of the equation. Um, so you're actually, sometimes you're waiting on clients and this is a technique that I like to do. I like to call in my the higher self of my soulmate clients and I kind of just connect in and I say you know um if they're in a place where they're ready to receive me receive my work and I'm here to amplify them and help them help bring them to me um so that I can be of service to them so actually energetically I call them in but that's really the only place where you're working on waiting on someone to show up and in business it's not going to affect you so much the divine timing aspect of it sometimes it's about you being ready to receive and maybe you still need to learn a lesson or something needs to happen but it's much more rare than it is when you're manifesting a relationship that's generally where we see it show up so if you're manifesting in other areas where it's not so much to do with divine timing we're kind of looking at a few things we're looking at blocks and we're looking at ability to receive ability to receive <sighs> is a big one, right? That's probably just, it's, it's a big one because you're asking for something and if it were to show up, would you actually be able to accept it, to receive it, to take it in? So the way I like to kind of look at this in a physical perspective is if you're saying, I want, you know, I wanna have a six figure business. I wanna make a hundred thousand dollars this year and you've only got like hundred dollar sessions and the universe would be like great i'll send you a thousand new clients and you're like oh, i can't actually accept that i can't receive it so it's you're actually not ready to receive it you don't know what to do with it you don't know how to accept it it can show up as as an example that's not to do with money if you have trauma right around relationships around partners and you're kind of like okay I want the soulmate relationship but there's still a big fear for you about showing up and being vulnerable in a relationship the perfect person shows up you go on a date you freak out go no nope, not for me I can't handle it and you can actually receive it you haven't risen to the level of being able to receive it so this one is really common because we'll see things like self-sabotage this is where it's I know I'm supposed to do this. I know that this is the action that I need to take to receive it, but I can't actually do it. Like I'm having a really hard time. I feel stuck, I'm pushing something up a hill. It's like, mm, there's self-sabotage happening in there. You're not ready to receive it because you haven't risen to alignment with it. And the only way we can rise to alignment with it, if that's not happening instantaneously, is through healing. So healing allows us to actually rise because whatever it is that's keeping us stuck has a lower vibration than that what we're manifesting. If you're wanting to call in abundance, business success, and that's on this beautiful high vibration, and you're kind of trudging along with your, I'm not good enough, I don't deserve it, you know, and your trauma fears around money, about success, about being visible, your past life trauma, all that, you're hanging out in this, um, in this vibration and even if in your meditations you kind of go up for a little bit then you come down and you go up for a little bit you come down and so when you heal it just naturally starts to raise your vibration so in my manifesting courses I do talk about that healing is have the equation to manifesting you can only rise as much as you have capacity to by letting go of the old to actually be able to open and receive to the new. So the first thing you wanna be checking is do you have any beliefs that are incongruent to what it is that you want? If you're saying, I would like to have $10,000 a month, consistent $10,000 a month, right? You can say to yourself along the lines of, I'm a six figure business owner. I'm making $10,000 with ease and grace joyfully in my business. As you say these things, notice 
Notice how it feels. And notice if you feel a constriction, a tightness, something show up in your body where you're like, ooh, that feels off, right? Because if you're saying it and it just feels good, open and flowing, great. Your throat chakra, your voice is saying, it's an alignment, it's good. But if you feel a constriction, tightness, it can be very subtle. You need to be sensitive to it. It can be very subtle and just like this little bit of tightness and of resistance. As you say it and go, mm, there's something there. And that tightness, that's resistance that's showing up physically in your body. It might even be an emotion. You know, it might be something like jealousy, anger, resentment show up. It's telling you, ah, you have a belief that's not in alignment with it, right? You have something that's not in alignment. Now, belief comes from either something that we've absorbed from previous lifetimes. It can come from what we've absorbed from our parents, our world, the collective consciousness in this lifetime, or it can be passed down ancestrally. So we have all these different ways for it to actually show up. And if it is past life, for example, which is very common if we're doing this work, because if you're doing your soul work, you've done it before for lifetimes. You're not new to it, right? If you're a healer, a sage, a witch, um, a psychic in this lifetime, I will guarantee you, you've done that for hundreds of lifetimes already. You are not new to it. You're just remembering, re-remembering and stepping deeper into that path because that's a path of your soul. Now, what that means is you're gonna be really fucking good at it and you really need to reactivate those memories but any traumas you've had of doing that work in previous lifetimes, they're probably gonna show up in your energetic system and it's worth clearing out. And that's why I'm such like, past life regression for business growth, really, really fucking vital. Um, so we have these beliefs, these traumas that can show up, they can be passed down from family. So if your parents were like to you, hmm, you have to work really hard for money, you know, great you know that was their belief but you don't need to actually take it on and you know believing that money gets to come easily i think that's one of the core beliefs that you want to have to create a successful business otherwise you're just going to be like i have to work harder for every next level that i want to reach in my business which doesn't really serve you because you're just going to be working harder working harder working harder burning yourself out what if it got to be easy? What if it just got to flow in? And that's gonna mean probably disconnecting from the beliefs you've been told by society, by your parents and the collective consciousness. It can be really triggering for the people around you to see you kind of getting to show up easily in the way that's supportive of you and feels good to you and make a lot more money than them. That's probably gonna trigger them. And it's up for you to disconnect from that and just be like, cool, like my ease and connection to money is triggering you, but that's got nothing to do with me. So beliefs like that are really important to clear because they're just gonna create resistance. And it's like, you want this thing on this vibration. You want to have, for example, an abundance, um, an abundant, purposeful, imp impactful six figure business. You want that or seven figures, seven figures, whatever it is. That's what you want. But you're operating with the beliefs of, I have to work really hard to earn my money. I have to be worthy of it. It's not safe for me to be visible because I have this past life trauma and my ancestors passed this down to me. And so you're operating on a vibration, on a mental level, right? Your beliefs, you're vibrating here. And so spiritually, you're tuning into all this energy and emotionally, you're tuning into all this energy. But we're talking about the four body system. You have your beliefs, which is the mental body, your emotions, the emotional body, the spiritual aspect of us as well, and the physical part of us as well. And it's all interconnected. So when you're tuning into it, you're tuning into it spiritually, um, emotionally, but you need to make sure that your beliefs are supporting you to get that. And your emotions will show you. If one of the tools that I love to use is for you to go, who are you jealous of? If you see, and you know, we all love to say, oh, I don't feel jealousy, you know, I don't get jealous, I'm not that type of person. That's all well and great, but it is an emotion that exists within all of us, right? It is a human emotion and it's not a bad thing. Just like anger isn't a bad thing, it's there to support us. Anger teaches us boundaries, it teaches us to reclaim our power. Jealousy also teaches us something. It's when these emotions are out of control. But if you go, who am I jealous of? When do I feel that jealousy come up? And so I did this a while ago. And for me, I noticed that 
I was getting an emotion of jealousy come up for people who it felt like their business was really easy. They didn't have to do any hard work. They didn't have to study really hard. They just kind of showed up and really quickly made a lot of money because I was operating with the belief I have to work really hard to have a successful business. I have to make a lot of money. And my jealousy was showing me, ah, you want it to be easy, but your beliefs are incongruent. So all these emotions you're having are showing you the belief programs that you have that are not supporting the manifestation you want. So the absolute key thing is actually leaning in and going, for me to have, and this is a journal prompt, like do this, for you to clear this, Go, for me to have this thing that I'm manifesting, this thing that I want to have, whatever it is, whether it's business, soulmate, money, whatever it is, what do I need to believe to be true about myself and about my reality, right? And journaling that stuff is going to come up for you. You're going to go, well, I need to believe that it can be easy or that I'm good enough, worthy enough. And then I want you to say them out loud and just test it. Go, where's constriction? Where am I feeling restriction? Where am I feeling like there's resistance here? Because that's what you're going to have to start clearing and working on. So that's the first thing, right? Making sure that the beliefs are congruent and in alignment with you. The next thing is trust. And I talk about it so much, but it's absolutely true. When you do your manifesting work it, and it's not showing up straight away the way you want it to, it's really easy for you to kind of go, get into your confusion, doubt, go, it's not happening. Why isn't it happening? Oh my God, I'm not doing it right. Blah, 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 blah. And the ego goes crazy. We just want to shush that down. Go, ego. No, no, no. Shush, 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 shush. Now's not the time, ego. And to actually just lean into... I am being taken care of by my guides. The universe is supporting me. God is supporting me. My spiritual team want for me what I desire. I am good enough for it. I'm a powerful manifester and I trust that it is coming my way. And lean into that feeling. Lean into that emotion because, you know, it's all about being on that vibrational alignment. And as soon as you, you do all your manifestation work and then you drop into vibrational misalignment through your doubt your confusion so it's up to you to lean back into that trust and allowance the surrender now when you usually when we manifest you know when we're holding something in the universe is going to throw opportunities at you it's going to give you hints and go take this action do this sign up for this or go here and it's really important that you listen so when you get like a little intuitive nudge or you get a thought of I should do this or I should show up for that it's really important that you actually take action on it if what you're manifesting is here energetically and you're here energetically you're attracting things on that vibration but as soon as you lift your vibration up into alignment with what it is you want to manifest you're attracting opportunities on that level so the opportunities may come in the form of a book a course a healer a teacher um publication opportunity, like just a meaning of a person, an idea of divine inspiration, but whatever comes to you as you're creating that alignment with your manifestation, it's important that you act on it, right? So this is the last piece, the action. The action is the least important part. I honestly believe that, like it's ask, receive, align, and then the action will start to show up, but you've still got to do it. You've still got to rise to it. Like, if an opportunity comes up, the right person comes up and you intuitively feel like, oh, I have to follow this. This feels like a, um, you know, like a branch. I have to follow this somewhere, follow it and show up because that's how you're actually going to receive it. And if you've done all the belief work to actually be able to receive it, you know, you're not going to feel like I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy of it. I can't handle this. I don't have the capacity to receive this. You're just going to show up for it easily, joyfully and be able to receive it, which is a really clear thing. Um, okay, so let me just check my notes. I think I've kind of covered all of that. So remembering those beliefs have to be in alignment and you're looking for the constriction of what beliefs do I need to believe to be true around this thing that I'm manifesting? Actually, I'm gonna write that out because I'm gonna check in with everyone. Um, 
and I want to hear how you go with this and then saying those beliefs out loud and noticing where there's constriction noticing where there's fear so does anybody have any I have a quite a few comments on this one does anybody have any questions about this about manifesting you know maybe you've had a hard time manifesting maybe you keep trying something's not happening let me know if you've been trying to manifest something and it just hasn't been happening and in my podcast I'm going to record the episode after this um, I'm going to be sharing those 12 universal laws from Melchior about manifesting and that'll go deeper and deeper into the hermetic principles of manifestation work is what which you might have heard of you might not be too familiar with but spirit keeps kind of blasting me with these higher concepts of manifestation that I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. So I'll be sharing that in the podcast. Okay. And if you're watching the replay and you have questions, post them down in the comments and I'll answer them as well. But let me know how you go with that homework. And if you are wanting support in manifesting your business, reaching that next level opening up to that level of abundance you know with my business clients i do that work i do the past life work i do the energetic alignment belief clearing and the strategy it's kind of like a full what you need as a spiritual business owner to rise to that next level so if you do want to work with me i'm still doing the free business abundance session so i'll post a link down below um and you can book that if you like oh some questions okay can our guides help us with the overstepping the fear of not good enough yes they absolutely can so it's interesting because the like whatever it is the fear of not being good enough it's up to you to really go into where does that actually come from where does the fear of not going good enough come from because it sounds like that's gonna need healing right and if it is something to do with healing they will most likely send you some sort of heal or some sort of book where you can clear that yourself the fear of not being good enough very often for people comes from childhood you know parents or someone saying to them you're not good enough and just hearing it over and over repeatedly it could be past life but generally I see that one from this lifetime so if you've got that showing up for you then they might send you the book the healer or the way to actually heal that and clear that for yourself um so they'll send you whatever resources to actually shift that and clear that and you can ask your guides directly for healing from wherever that comes from and start to do that work yourself so definitely gabby how long is it usually supposed to take to manifest something when you are in alignment ah this is the fun question isn't it no it's interesting because um it really depends i've seen it come very quickly i've seen it come like take a little bit longer um I'm just th I'm thinking of examples of myself where things have manifested quickly and slowly and I usually always ask my guides I say okay so I'm manifesting this thing when is it actually going to show up in my life and sometimes they've said to me like within a week you know sometimes they said well it needs to kind of take form and this needs to happen before that so it's going to be like three weeks Generally, if you are in alignment and you are really fully aligned with it um, and stepping into it, and it's something that's in the physical, like if you're manifesting an apartment, right? There's not all this like other stuff around it. It's not like you need to heal a million things to manifest an apartment. That kind of thing can drop really quickly. So your manifestation has based on developing spiritual gifts or connecting more directly with source. Um, which you have not been successful yet. Yeah, so I'm going to say that that's going to take a little bit longer. Now, the reasons why that is, is because they're going to be doing energy work on you. And that takes time. Like I've been getting upgrades on my third eye, which has been giving me third eye headaches for like the last three months, right? And it's progress. They can't kind of unleash all that energy on you at once. Because what you're asking for is an energetic upgrade, opening of the third eye. That's not something that happens all at once. It's very hard for someone to handle that. So that generally comes um, in steps and you slowly have more experiences and more experiences and more experiences. Um, but it's really important that you keep manifesting that and opening that up. And actually there are so many tools and so much work you can be doing to open that up and step into it. You know, like I have the free psychic activation training that I do a couple of times a year. That's really profound and powerful. I've had a lot of people have like big shifts from that so it's also the energy work you're doing on yourself but if you're manifesting and asking your guides for support from that that one specifically will probably take 
at least a few months, but you'll notice you get more sensitive, you start to see more things, but it's aligned with the amount of energy work that you're actually doing for yourself. Like I have people who have come to some of my courses, like my energy work courses, and they've literally gone like the next time I've seen them, I now see auras. And it's just from shifting the vibration in their third eye, because that's what it is. So it's energy work that you're actually, that's um, shifting how quickly that manifests, if that makes sense. Um, any other questions? I'm going to give another minute. Hopefully that makes sense, Gabby. But um, it depends what it is you're manifesting for how long it takes to show up and how much kind of trauma or baggage you have around. If you have no baggage around money, if you sorted out all your money stuff previous lifetimes and you're manifesting money in this lifetime, it's going to show up like that. So it really depends on what it is and, you know, how in alignment you are to receiving it. If someone who was like a channel or a psychic in their past life is asking for spiritual gifts to show up, they're going to show up a lot faster than for someone who wasn't. So it's really dependent on you and like how ready you are to just align with it. Because if there's stuff to heal, that process takes longer. And that's all it is. Healing allows us to rise, which allows us to get into alignment to receive our manifestation work. So that's why like I'm such a big um, proponent of healing like I see healers and do healing work on myself at least once a week like usually twice a week there's a lot of hours spent on my healing work because I know as I heal I rise and I get what I want right healing gets you what you want it gets the business success it gets you you know the relationship whatever it is that you want healing is a core component of it um so thank you everyone for joining in today hopefully that answered some questions and helped um, and if you do want to sign up for that free session to go deeper into it, um, I'll be, I'll post a link down below. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.